Wow! The GoPro Hero 11 and the iPhone 14 Pro both produce simply fantastic shots. And yes, of course, you can't completely replace a GoPro with a smartphone. And a smartphone isn't just a camera, of course. But today, we want to know which of these two popular consumer cameras takes the better shots. I'm going to compare both cameras today in a total of 10 categories. To make the comparison a bit more interesting, the winner of each category will get a point. Will the GoPro or the iPhone score more points? Let's find out. Very important is what options a camera offers you when it comes to choosing the field of view or focal length. The GoPro has an extremely wide field of view, which is naturally well suited for action shots. The ultra-wide camera of the 14 Pro has about the same wide focal length as the Hero 11. However, the iPhone 14 Pro has a very important advantage. It does not only have one camera and one lens, but three cameras with three different lenses. You can set a total of four different focal lengths. Here you can see a comparison of a Hero 11 shot with the different focal lengths of the iPhone. This is just to show you what a huge advantage these extra cameras and lenses are. I have to add that of course the GoPro Hero 11 also offers additional settings when it comes to the field of view. For example, there is Super View or the Field of View Hyper View. Both settings lead to extreme distortions, but the field of view is even wider than in the standard setting. For the mentioned reasons, the first point goes to the iPhone 14 Pro. And actually, the iPhone would even earn two points for this enormous advantage. Let's now take a closer look at the colors, the contrast and the look of the shots. As we noted at the beginning, both cameras produce very nice shots. In this first comparison, you can see that the GoPro's shot has slightly more cinematic colors. The iPhone's shot looks a bit cooler overall and has more of a green undertone. The GoPro shot, on the other hand, looks more reddish in comparison and therefore simply warmer. Both cameras prefer a rather unsaturated natural look. On the GoPro, you can also set another color profile. The color profile Vibrant produces much more saturated and contrasty images. Here you can see a direct comparison with the iPhone. What is also noticeable is that the iPhone produces a much softer image overall. The GoPro's shot has significantly more clarity and contrast. Take a look at the sky or the water in this comparison for example. The iPhone's image looks much softer which I personally like better. It's quite difficult to objectively find a clear winner in this category. I like the colors of the GoPro better, but I prefer the soft look of the iPhone. For this reason, I give both cameras one point in this category. The most important of all colors, however, is the color of the skin tones. That's why there is a separate category for it. And here you can see once again that the high contrast look of the GoPro makes details clearly stand out more. With the skin tones, however, it's more of a disadvantage. The skin looks much softer in the iPhone's shot and impurities are less noticeable. In addition, the skin looks a bit redder in the GoPro's shot. In the iPhone shots, it looks a bit more yellowish, but also more natural. I'm not a big fan of the GoPro skin tones, so this point goes to the iPhone for me. Let's take a look at the dynamic range of the two cameras. This is about how well the two cameras manage to show details in very bright and very dark areas of the image at the same time. A few years ago, the iPhone could easily win this comparison against the GoPro. However, when I look closely at these comparison shots, I have to admit that the GoPro has been able to catch up strongly in this category. We can only see very slight differences between the iPhone 14 Pro's shot and the Hero 11's shot. However, if we look closely, we notice that the iPhone is still just ahead in this category. Especially in the dark areas, the iPhone manages to show more details. Of course, this also has something to do with the fact that the GoPro creates a bit more contrast and the iPhone overexposes a bit on the other hand. Nevertheless, you can see in a direct comparison that the iPhone also protects the highlights, that is the very bright areas in the image, a bit better. For this reason, this category also goes to the iPhone. Let's take a look at which of the two cameras can capture more details. The GoPro Hero 11 can capture footage in 5.3K. The iPhone, although it has a 48 megapixel sensor on the main camera, can only capture footage in 4K. And now if we zoom in on the footage from both cameras, we can see that the higher resolution of the GoPro has slight advantages. Again, the difference isn't huge, and it's probably not particularly relevant in practice, but you can see it. In this shot, for example, in the texture of the tower or in the mountains in the background. So if you want to later crop into the shot, you'll get a slightly better image with the GoPro. Of course, it's clear that with the iPhone, you could just use a different lens. But here it's simply a matter of how detailed the individual shot is. Again, the difference isn't huge in this category, but there's a slight edge for the GoPro. And that's why the point goes to the Hero 11. Before we get into slow motion and stabilization, let's take a look at what additional video features both cameras offer. The GoPro has significantly more settings options in video mode than the iPhone, at least when we use the iPhone 14. Pro with the standard camera app. 
So on the GoPro, you can reduce the sharpness. There are free color profiles, even a flat color profile, and you can also adjust the bitrate and color depth. But the iPhone also has some really outstanding video features. The iPhone 14 Pro can shoot in HDR Dolby Vision. Particularly bright areas in the image can thus be displayed much brighter. To benefit from this, however, you need to use an HDR capable screen, which of course is the screen of the iPhone. Then there is the cinematic mode, even though it is still not fully perfected. This artificially creates a blurred background. Unlike with the GoPro, you can also create a blurred background with the iPhone naturally and without cinematic mode, as you can see in this shot. And then of course there is the macro mode. With this you can get extremely close to objects and take incredible close-ups. With the GoPro on the other hand, you should always keep a certain minimum distance from an object, because otherwise the shot will look blurry and out of focus. Neither camera has particularly big issues with compression. This is also true for the iPhone, though it produces much smaller files. Overall, the iPhone's video files are only about a third as large as the GoPro's files. As you can see, the iPhone especially has a lot of interesting additional video features. The GoPro gets a point from me for the additional settings, and the iPhone gets two points for the additional video features. When it comes to slow motion, both cameras can shoot very nice footage in 4K at 60 frames per second. Such a recording allows at least a slow motion of 50%. The image quality at 60 frames per second of both cameras corresponds to the image quality at 30 or 24 frames per second. The GoPro then also allows shooting in 4K at 120 frames per second. That enables a 4 times slow motion. It is incomprehensible, but on the iPhone you have to reduce the resolution to 1080 for 120 frames per second. The image quality is correspondingly poor. Here, in direct comparison, you can see that the GoPro shot looks much much better. In addition, the iPhone also loses its great dynamic range in slow motion mode. In the background, you can see that the bright areas in the image burn out completely. Both cameras can then also shoot slow motion at 240 frames per second. The GoPro in 2.7K, the iPhone again in 1080. In this mode, the image quality of the GoPro also decreases significantly. However, the GoPro's shot still looks significantly better than the iPhone's shot. The slow motion category clearly goes to the GoPro Hero 11. Okay, we come to a very interesting category, stabilization. Interesting because the iPhone wants to compete with the GoPro in this area with the new action mode. But let's take a look at the comparison in standard mode first. The stabilization on the GoPro is set to on, and the iPhone's action mode is still switched off here. A slight advantage for the GoPro can already be seen when walking. You can see here that with the strong movements while running, the GoPro has difficulties with the stabilization. But the iPhone can't handle the situation at all. In the standard settings, the iPhone clearly can't keep up. So we activate the action mode, and on the GoPro the improved stabilization mode boost. As you can see, the new settings result in a crop on both cameras. The iPhone can now stabilize the shot much better. In a direct comparison, however, I would say that the GoPro still stabilizes the image a bit better. There is something else you should know about this though. When you activate boost on the GoPro, the field of view is reduced but the image quality remains roughly the same. The iPhone's action mode also leads to a reduced field of view. The crop is even slightly bigger on the iPhone than on the GoPro. In addition, the action mode leads to a strong decrease in image quality. You can see that very well in this comparison. The resolution is also reduced to 2.8K. In summary, we simply have to say that the iPhone is still not an action camera. This point clearly goes to the GoPro. It's incredible, but after 8 categories, it's actually 6 to 5. And two very important categories still follow. Low light and audio quality. This first shot was taken at dusk. The GoPro can definitely still get a nice shot in this situation. What you should know about the iPhone in low light is that the three cameras of the iPhone perform differently in low light. Especially the main camera achieves good results in low light. What is immediately noticeable in this first comparison is that the iPhone exposes the image much brighter. Here you can see a comparison with the iPhone's main camera, which produces a very bright but also very clean image in this situation. Here it was a bit darker, and the GoPro clearly has difficulties with these difficult lighting conditions. There is clearly image noise to be seen. The iPhone still exposes much brighter, and the ultrawide camera of the iPhone also has difficulties with this situation. However, this does not apply to the main camera. It still produces a good image quality even in these low light conditions. Here I would like to show you that you should not move too much with both cameras in low light. The image stabilization clearly needs more light and sharp images. This is true for both cameras though. The low light category, however, goes to the iPhone overall. The audio quality is certainly one of the most important quality features of a video camera. 
However, it is often somewhat neglected. Of course, I have to admit that the audio quality of an action camera is somewhat less important than that of a smartphone, for example. At the moment, you can hear the recordings of the GoPro and the iPhone 14 Pro alternately. Since we probably shoot more often with an action camera outdoors, here is a short comparison of a recording in the garden. Both cameras are about a meter away. Can you hear a clear difference? All right, I think that was pretty clear. The audio quality category goes to the iPhone 14 Pro. And with that, we have found a winner for today. It is clear that the awarding of points is subjective and one or the other category could be clearly more important for you. But I think we got a good idea today of how these two cameras compare head to head. If the video was interesting for you, give me a like as feedback. There will be more videos to come on the iPhone 14 Pro and the GoPro Hero 11. So stay tuned and see you next time.